Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to do a review on an album that I just ended up picking up. I had an Amazon gift card, so I wanted it. I was like, okay, this is worth trying. Um, it, you know, the title, obviously, the artist and the title are solid, so I was like, let's give this a go. Um, and I've heard some of it online, and it sounded like it was going to be pretty good. And so I was like, let's try it. And so the release I want to talk about is this Art Blakey album that just came out. I apologize for some of the glare. It's still got the rap on it. Um, but Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers just coolin'. And you can see it's Blue Note uh, 64201. I don't particularly know why that catalog number and how they determined that catalog number, but that's the catalog number. And this has the very classic Jazz Messenger lineup, and it's really closely associated to the lineup. Well, it is the lineup that you would see on an album that I'll mention right after we talk about the record date because they're really close to each other. It was recorded March 8, 1959 and for whatever reason Blue Note decided to not release it and I, as I was reading the liner notes I got a little bit of an idea of why they didn't release it. Um, so at this point they were really focusing on doing a live recording of the Jazz Messengers and they did the Jazz Messengers at the Jazz Corner of the World, and it was that's uh, Blue Note uh, 40, 15, and 16. And so they decided that they really wanted to focus on those two releases, and they didn't release this one at the time, and then for whatever reason they didn't come back to it and release it. So it sits like two months, or not even, like a month before the Jazz Corner of the World recordings, because um, that was recorded April of 59, this is March of 59. And so, like I said, as I was reading the liner notes on this album, that's what, what it's mentioning, is that they were focusing on that live recording and then just never got around to releasing this one. You know, when you look at, like, the vaults of Blue Note and the, what they have in there, like, so many record labels would kill to just have their vaults, not even, like, their released catalog, just the vaults that they've had of unreleased stuff over the years that they release, like years and sometimes decades later. So this pretty much has a lineup that you would was the Jazz Messengers at this time. Lee Morgan on trumpet, Hank Mobley on tenor sax, uh, Bobby Timmons on piano, Jimmy Merritt on bass, and Art Blakey of course on the drums. Um, the It has six tracks on it and for the most part most of this album is Hank Mobley and Bobby Timmons related as far as like compositions. So it goes, the first track is called Hipsy Blues, which is a Hank Mobley song. On that track, Lee Morgan is just on fire, but Hank Mobley just kills it on that track. He is like absolutely firing at all cylinders. The two of them together, they're just firing at all cylinders. It's a great, great track. Um, the second track is super interesting. And um, it's, it's actually written by Bernice Petker. Um, it's called Close Your Eyes. And what's really, really interesting about this is that there is, so it's got a very, you know, normal sound to it as far as like you're going to have the head of a tune, the horn players are going to take their solos, Bobby Timmons takes their, his solo. Bobby Timmons in general kills it on this album. He is absolutely killer on this album um, but what's super interesting about that track is there's like this little mini bass solo that Jimmy Merritt does but it's got Mobley and Morgan actually playing these quick little staccato hits during the bass solo and that's super interesting you don't really traditionally see that in a bass solo and it, it so makes the bass solo like I so obviously, you know, people that have watched my channel know I play bass and my, my name is fairly, I, you know, obvious that I, I'm a bass player. And I am a firm believer as a bass player that I don't really enjoy bass solos that much in a jazz setting be, and, and particularly in an upright jazz setting because the register of the instrument requires mostly everyone to fall out. So you could hear the bass solo if if you're going for like a solo that is not 
you know, interplaying with another member of your band. If you're just going to do a bass solo, similar how like a horn would do their horn solo, but a horn is at a higher register, and obviously a rhythm section will play behind a horn taking a solo. Even a piano player, they take their solo, the bass and the drums remain. But a lot of bass solos and jazz recordings, everyone drops out. And it just kills the momentum of the song. Like the song goes from having momentum to just dead in its tracks so that you could hear the bass. And it's just kind of... I don't know, it kills a lot of songs. Now there are some songs that have amazing bass solos that don't kill it, but for a lot of them, I feel like the bass solo just kills the momentum of the song. And I think this is super evident if you're listening to a jazz recording in your car through your car speakers, which are not really designed, you know, unless you've modified your speakers, they're not designed for the most part for the register of a double bass, an upright bass, sometimes called double bass. And, you know, if you listen to a jazz recording in your car, you'll hear, you know, and if you don't have it really, really cranked up, you'll hear, you know, song, 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 nothing. And really, it's the bass taking the solo, but it's hard to hear through a car speaker that isn't set up or designed for that. And so I feel like it's really evident in that situation. When you're listening to a vinyl record and you're listening to your speakers, which are obviously tuned properly, you know, you obviously can hear a bass solo more clearly, but I still feel like it kills the momentum. And I'm sorry to go on that little rant, but that's why I thought this solo on this song was so good because the other instruments don't completely drop out. They actually have little staccato hits where they're answering. And it's really, it's a great little feature and a great interplay of how the solo is actually playing into the larger context of the song and not just randomly there because everybody needs to get their solo so that was that song um next song which i thought was super interesting it's called jimmerick and they don't know who wrote it they actually wrote like written by unknown composer and i thought that was kind of interesting because i've never really have seen that anywhere on another album before um for the most part it's a it's just a blues um and morgan and, and mobley take their solos Timmons takes a great solo, and Timmons on that track like is on fire. He kills it, and he's got this great, great groove and just continuous swing to his playing on that song. It's a great song. Um, you flip it over to side two, it starts off with something called Quick Trick, which is a Bobby Timmons song, and um, what's interesting is this is the only recorded version of this song. That's what it says on the liner notes. I've never heard of the song, and that's why, obviously. This is the only recorded version of it. Um, and, uh, again, Bobby Timmons really kills it on this song. His his take on this song is so good. And the solos by Morgan and Mobley really kill it, too. But it's really, you know, Timmons... I think Timmons is the star of this album, to be truthful. Timmons is great on this album. Um, next, it goes to Eminem, which is a Hank Mobley song. And that one has been on other Hank Mobley songs. Um, and there's nothing particularly different about this take, truthfully. It's pretty consistent with any other time I've heard this song by Mobley. It's a good song, it's a, but it's no different, really. Um, and then Just Cooling is also, again, a Hank Mobley song. What's actually really interesting is this is the first song, really, I like you, a lot of Mobley songs, he's, uh, Blakey albums, he's got a lot of drum fills and different drum solos obviously as the leader he's a drummer um but he doesn't really actually take in much solos on this album until the last two songs where you really start to hear him play and then the last song particularly he takes like a fairly long solo but it's pretty interesting that you know none of the other songs really had like that traditional art blakey solo you're used to hearing like on drum suite off of you know 4003 so that was kind of interesting really good song i really enjoyed it um overall it's a really good album and i think it's totally worth the 20 bucks that it is on amazon 21 dollars or something like that on amazon um, it's consistent with the blue note 80s as far as quality of the pressing and the sound really good sound quality the pressing is a 180 gram vinyl mastered by kevin gray um, good solid release good solid vinyl uh, what is kind of interesting, I don't particularly know how Bluno makes these decisions, 
but the label obviously has the traditional Blue Note label, but it's got the New York address, which I thought was kind of a little strange because really the releases at this point still had the 47 West 63rd, but I've seen them do this many times on reissues. They arbitrarily just decide on an address and that's what they do. And I don't particularly know why, but um, like I said, it's a good thick piece of vinyl. I mean, you could see um, 180 gram. It's pressed well, mastered well. It's a really good release. I really do recommend it for the 2020 Bun Bucks. It's a great album to get the Jazz Messengers in their prime and to really get a solid Jazz Messenger album that's really on comparison with Big Beat. To me, this sounds really like Big Beat. That's the album I think this sounds closest to is Big Beat, which is 4029. Um, so if you like that album, you're going to really like this album. They, they sound really similar because um, Bobby Timmons really kills it on Big Beat and he kills it on this. And Bobby Timmons really makes these those two albums, in my opinion. So that's Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers just coolin'. I just wanted to talk about it for a little bit. Hope everybody enjoyed the video, and if you were curious about this release, I hope it helped you kind of figure out if you were going to purchase it or not. Um, I recommend it, so, you know, take that for what it's worth, but I think it's definitely an album worth checking out. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time.